Hi, friends. Good evening. Good evening, good evening. We're gonna let folks enter, the, enter this virtual space and get started in a minute. If folks wanna go ahead and share their greetings in the chat, we would love to hear from you. You're welcome to share your name, where you're calling or zooming in from, um, and how you're arriving today. Um, I know I'm arriving a little bit, little bit uh, windy if I was a weather, um, but I'm really glad to be here. So yeah, where you're calling in from, how you're doing, and how you're arriving if you want to share your state um, as you find yourself right now. Come on, Sunny. Um, so we're really glad to have folks in this space with us tonight. We're gonna give folks uh, another minute to, to join us and then we're uh, gonna get going. So I believe we're also streaming to Facebook. So if folks uh, would prefer that method, you're also welcome to, to join us that way. Um, cool. Hi friends. All right, Toby. Okay, seeing some, some familiar names, some new names, um, and really glad to be here with you all as we close out 2021. Um, my name is Kate Shapiro. I have the honor of being the organizing director at the Women's March. Um, and just to let folks know, this is gonna be a webinar that's gonna be a lot more sort of focused on our individual and collective sort of grounding. We're not gonna be uh, doing political hot takes. We're not gonna be talking too much about our, at all really about 2022 and our plans, but really trying to figure out how we can hold a container to acknowledge um, the reality of this, <laughs> this world and this time um, and what we've been able to do together uh, despite all sorts of <sighs> realities. Um, so also thank you for doing what you had to do to be here tonight um, in whatever state you are arriving in, we are glad to be here with you. Um, this is a webinar format, so uh, the chat is available to you for communication. There's also Q&A if folks uh, need to utilize that, but we also encourage folks to uh, just kind of be present with us in this conversation and in this container tonight. I do want to uh, let folks know that we do have closed captioning available for those that are on the Zoom, um, and the way that you can access that is you can go to the bottom of your Zoom on the bottom right hand corner, you should see a box that says CC. Um, and if you click that, then the closed captions will pop up. I also want to welcome an, uh, Gina Breedlove, um, renowned medicine woman, sound healer and artist who is going to be helping us open the space, hold the space and close the space tonight. So we are super grateful to have you here with us, Gina. And of course, shout out to the Women's March team um, who is doing the tech, doing all of the things um, on this call as well as in other places right now as we work to close out the year. The one other sort of logistical or practical reminder um, that I would like to invite folks uh, to take a second to do is if you have a notebook or markers or my friend the post-it, I also have my notebook, um, or a journal, um, want to invite you to, to grab that. Or if you've got some flip chart on the wall, um, if you're a nerd like me, to grab that because we are going to give some folks some time for some uh, individual reflection and contemplation um, that you can use uh, in, your own, in your own life um, after this call. So the, the last thing that I want to say um, before I uh, hand it over to Gina is that we also wanted to just acknowledge um, the, the, the great, the wonderful, the renowned, um, the vital um, black feminist um, bell hooks who transitioned yesterday at the age of 69 um, and how instrumental she was in and remains um, in so many of our individual lives as well as also sort of inside of the 
the DNA um, of Women's March. If anybody knows me and has been part of our short course and other feminist organizing trainings, her definition of feminism is one that we also use as a touchstone, not only because it names uh, patriarchy and sexism um, as something to dismantle, but it also names the reality that in order to dismantle sexism and patriarchy, we have to dismantle all forms of domination um, in all of the ways that it might, um, yeah, be big into this society. So I um, want to wish her a peaceful transition and acknowledge all of the different ways that she has um, helped make the world anew. So I, with, with that, I want to give folks, you know, another minute if they want to introduce themselves in the chat and tell us how you're arriving and where you're calling in from. Um, and then I would, oh, let me actually do the agenda. Sorry, and then I'm going to hand it to you, Gina, um, just so folks know a little bit about where we're going tonight, and they're not like, so people can be present. Allison, can you go to the, um, the next slide? Oh, yeah, there's your reminder. Once again, grab your notebook and writing utensil. I believe the agenda may, might be the next one. Oh, there's Bell Hooks, once again, in her beauty and glory, so thank you. Maybe it's the next one. There we go. Awesome. So this is our roadmap um, for our time together tonight. You will notice that it looks a little bit different from some of our different, um, our other webinars or our trainings. So we're gonna, um, with, after I go through the agenda, I wanna hand it over to uh, the wonderful Gina Breedlove for an opening song and invocation. Then we're gonna talk a little bit about sort of the Grace Lee Boggs quote, uh, another, powerful feminist and thinker and organizer about what time is it on the clock of the world. Um, and then talk a little bit more about what we're acknowledging and seeing in, in all the different ways about some of what we're grappling with uh, to, be, to be feminists, to be organizers, to be people of conscience in this time. Um, and then we're gonna uh, look at the work that we've been able to accomplish together uh, with all of our different individual hands together at Women's March and do some uh, individual reflection um, and gratitude practice. And then Gina's gonna close us out. So that is where we are going tonight, everybody. So grab your tea, if you're a tea drinker, do what you've got to do to be present with us um, and enjoy the ride. So I'm really excited about our space uh, and time together tonight. And without further ado, I want to hand it over to you, Gina, to help us sink in uh, to, to this container and to this time. Thank you, Kate. Thank you so much. I'm grateful and honored to be here. And so welcome, family. That's the language we use in my tradition. Welcome, family. I invite you all, wherever you be, however you be, to breathe with us a collective breath as you are able, as you have capacity. I invite you to inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth and lean into the sound of my voice. I realize that there are a multitude of sounds on your end of things, I'm sure. Children, partners, folk, traffic, rain, all the things. We don't resist the sounds of the moment. We lean into what we can. And right now I ask you to lean into my voice. We are here to love 
reach all the through we are here to witness and be and do come on welcome to the table however you feel welcome to the table and let's be real breathing inhaling and exhaling together family as you have capacity we are opening the space between us we call upon the mothers of 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 mothers her mother and her mother and her mother and her mother the fathers the sons the theys the thems the two spirits the however you come however you be however you circle yourself, know yourself. We welcome you. We open the space between us. We call on the directions. We honor the north, the south, the east, and the west. We honor the elementals, the fire, the water, the wind, the air. We honor the, the sound. We honor the sound of your voice, the sound of your name, the sound of this moment. We honor all beings. Join us, please, however you pray, however you honor the divine, however you honor nature. Buddha, Allah, Jesus, Spirit, Grace, Jehovah, whatever your name is, trees, water, earth and sky, however you honor your place in things, we open the space between us. These spaces are only ever, ever, always open for love, for freedom, for justice, for grace, for witness, for support, for grief letting, for rage, for presence, for the sound of your voice. Welcome. We welcome you. We open this space between us. And I say welcome to the table, come as you be, come on sit down at the table, and yes, let's get free. Welcome to this table, family. I say a whole, amen. So it is. Welcome. Thank you. Dear Kate, I welcome you back into the space, your wonderful voice. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gina. Ooh, that moved me. That moved me. Um, in my spirit, so thank you. And I know that you're getting some love in the chat um, as well as energetically, whether people are uh, communicating that through the chat or not. So thank you um, in terms of helping us ground and knowing that in an ideal world, we would be in a shared space together uh, and being able to uh, hear our different voices. So thank you for um, connecting us back to that. Um, okay. Can we go to the next slide, please, Allison? All right. So I want to read us a little bit of an excerpt from um, Women's March's new sort of visions and values statement, because we know that it is a wild, it's a wild time out here, everybody. Um, and we, and the reason why we wanted to also have this call is that we have the privilege uh, some of us are being on staff and being able to see some of the different uh, impact and possibilities um, and transformations happening inside of this organization and wanted to be able to mirror some of that back to you all and to, and to hold that as our collective um, accomplishments and possibility. Um, but we, I want to read this quote and then we're going to talk about the Grace Lee Box quote. So from our vision and value statement that we've been also so sort of recrafting over this last year in collaboration with many, many people. It says the following. It says, there is no single blueprint for the feminist future we are working to build. 
We invite you to join us in learning, testing, and growing together. Our values aren't just about the changes we want to see in the world. They're also about how we work with one another, building leadership and taking risks as we collaborate and experiment. We work at Women's March to serve as an inclusive, welcoming on-ramp to action, providing everyday women with resources, training, political education, and opportunities to maximize impact across race and place. Um, and so that's where we um, are orienting some of our some of our grounding um, as we as we step into this next uh, this next year and this next phase um, of work as well as reflection. Um, and this is the quote here, um, this Grace Lee Boggs quote of what time is it on the clock of the world feels like one that I, I return to all of the time. I don't even know when she said it, but it was quite some time ago. Um, and that question actually serves as a touchstone um, for many of us um, to be able to actually zoom out from our individual experiences to be able to try to make sense of all that is uh, happening in this world as part of our um, part of our political practice and part of our values. So curious how folks would answer that question. Um, if they have if they have a thought about it, you're welcome to drop it on into the chat. Um, when you think about what time is it on the clock of the world, sort of what comes to mind? This isn't a test, but if people want to engage that question in the chat, we, um, we, welcome, we welcome you to do that, right? And so we at Women's March think a lot about um, this question, as well as um, our, 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 best, our best role and our best contribution. Um, and that we often, you know, when we're thinking about what time is it on the clock of the world, we think about it as a time of incredible transformation, incredible uncertainty, incredible possibility, and escalating crisis, right? Um, and another great feminist thinker, um, Joanna Macy, talks about this time period in the world, in the clock of the world, as also the great turning, that we are inside of um, immense upheaval and immense um, transformation, right? And that we're at the crossroads. Nothing is fully determined yet on how, how it's all going to shake out. And so we just have been sitting, and I personally have been sitting in the, the concept of the great turning. Um, and I know that many folks are lightly and seriously talking about, you know, crisis, apocalypse, um, and others are talking about the, you know, the great unveiling, including Vandana Shiva, not Vandana Shiva, um, Arundhati Roy, who talks about the pandemic being a portal, right? Um, and so, yeah, I'm seeing folks actually adding a bunch of uh, great insight into the chat around um, around uh, what time is it on the clock of the world, right? So thank you for that. Um, and so we just also wanted to name this because we want to acknowledge, oh, great, there it is. That's what I said <laughs> a little bit earlier. We want to acknowledge the truth of the stakes in this time. Right, that it's not, um, it's not a low stakes time. Um, and that what has been building for centuries is also coming to bear, right? With different um, systems um, that are being, that we're reckoning with, be that our system of public safety, um, systems of economic injustice and debt, um, the internet, et cetera, as well as what is new. So we just also wanna acknowledge and I know that we're feeling this individually as well as globally, we want to also acknowledge the fear and uncertainty um, that so many of us are grappling with, especially inside of COVID. Um, and that there is great, great isolation and longing um, for meaning, purpose, and connection. Um, and that we, yeah, feel like part of our feminist obligation is to tell the truth. Um, and not that there's one truth, 
but to be able to name and hold some of what we're grappling with while we're also trying to, you know, feed our kids, keep a roof over our heads um, and just get by the day. So uh, really want to just name that. Um, and then the only other thing that we wanted to also sort of acknowledge is like literally what time is it on the clock of the world in this time period? Um, as we approach winter solstice next Tuesday, is that we um, that this is the the time of great darkness, um, and that inside of great darkness comes great growth um, and rest um, and the seeding of possibilities. Right, be that the the growth of children in the darkness of the womb, uh, be that seeds under the earth. Um, or be that um, the, the darkness of the night sky, that we understand darkness um, as a place of power, uh, possibility, and refuge, um, and that we want to take, we want to take seriously the gifts that this time period give us individually. However, we want to do that, you know, we're not saying we know how to do that, but we want to just name that um, as solstice approaches. So I'm going to have a couple of our staff read a couple of other quotes that kind of also exemplify a little bit of what time is it on the clock of the world. And then I'm going to give folks a little bit of time to do some journaling about what we've been planting and harvesting. And then we're going to talk more about what Women's March collectively what we've been able to do together. Um, so that is what, where we are going. Oh, I get to read the Vandana Shiva quote. Shout out to Vandana Shiva. If you have been following her work, I'm with you. If you haven't, look her up. Um, yeah, she is an Indian feminist, eco-feminist, brilliant, um, scientist, author, seed saver, all of the things. Um, so look her up. She is on our team. We want to, we want to rock with her. So um, I'm going to read this quote and then I'm going to hand it to whoever is next. Uh, the liberation of the earth, the liberation of women, the liberation of all humanity is the next step of freedom we need to work for. And it's the next step of peace we need to create. In nature's economy, the currency is not money, it is life. Okay, let's um, go to the next one after we breathe that one in. Go ahead, Jalisa. Hi, y'all. Um, Jalisa, I'm a field organizer for Women's March. For those of you who know me, hello. And for those of you who don't, hello, hello. Um, this is a quote from Audre Lorde. When I dare to be powerful, to use my strength in the service of my vision, then it becomes less and less important whether I am afraid. Hi everyone, Allison here. Uh, this quote is from Octavia Butler. All that you touch, you change and all that you change, changes you. Happiness eases change, kindness eases change, and love quiets fear. Thank you. Um, and some of these are long, like, you know, Octavia Butler wrote this uh, from Parable of the Sower in the 90s. I just re-listened to it. Join me in that. Um, and so not all of these are quotes that necessarily came from this year, but still also exemplify for us a little bit of the, yeah, touchstones um, that we want to come back to, especially in this time of reflection, uh, that feel like they provide meaning and solace um, amidst all of the uncertainty um, so that's Jenny so good I know prophet of life over there um so yeah what we're gonna do right now is give people and don't think I'm not gonna do it because somebody has their journal oh we're gonna we're gonna start back with this quote actually let's read it right now it's too good um okay Jalisa do you want to read the bell hooks quote yes um, the resistance, 
begins with people confronting pain and wanting to do something to change it. And we have to restore feminism as a political movement. The challenge to patriarchy is political and not an identity or a lifestyle. How delicious that. Come on, come on, bell hooks. Um, so what I'm gonna give folks a moment to do, and we're gonna have about three minutes to do this, is, and all of us gonna do it together, including me, is, yeah, what did you grow or what grew and what was harvested for you personally in this difficult year? Or maybe it wasn't difficult for you. Um, what are you envisioning planting for the next year, right? Um, so what grew and what was harvested for you personally in this year? And what are you envisioning planting for next year? Um, and Allison's gonna play us a little bit of music and I'm gonna give us about three minutes just to start that. Um, start those seeds uh, being sown in our own brains and in our notebooks or on our sticky notes. Um, and then we're gonna come back together and uh, talk a little bit more about what we were able to collectively uh, plant and harvest uh, this year as Women's March. So what grew and what was harvested for you personally in this year? What are you envisioning planting for next year? And thanks for doing, giving us our uh, non-copyrighted music, Allison, I appreciate you.
whatever whatever brilliant thought you have. Um, also, people were sharing a bunch of different um, reflections to us, and a lot of them were just sent to the hosts and panelists, not to everyone. So you might want to go back and see if you didn't share it with everyone. We encourage you to do that. Um, I know that I'm working, I'm envisioning planting some um, more seeds about being willing to be a little bit more vulnerable um, in a bunch of different aspects of my life. So super um, grateful to see, yeah, the, um, the levity and the enthusiasm and some of the real, uh, the real things that people are looking forward to um, letting go of um, or lessening, lessening the bonds of. So thank you uh, for sharing um, and joining us in that. Um, I believe that our managing director Tamika Middleton is on, but cannot unmute. I'm gonna see, um, I, I believe you cannot. So Tamika, just let us know. What, oh, oh I'm is that here. you? I'm not. I'm, uh, <laughs> I am here and I will be able to fully join in a, maybe about 10 minutes, but okay. I am I'm here. I'm listening in. Okay. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so awesome. glad to be here with everyone. Hi, friend. Okay, well, just give me the, I'll just keep rambling and you let me know um, when you are prepared and we will um, hand it over to you, friend. So, awesome. So, Thank you um, for the additional um, reflections that are pouring in. So what we're gonna do right now, um, start, you know, we're starting with the individual and then we're gonna go back out to the collective and then we're gonna come back um, to the sort of individual and communal. Um, but what I'm gonna do, um, and then maybe Tamik will join us midway, is I'm gonna talk a little bit more. I'm gonna take us down memory lane, everybody just a short memory lane of 2021, but woo, can I get a, it was a long year, uh, at least for me. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm gonna take us through uh, what we've been able to accomplish together. Um, and when I say we, I mean like we as in the big we, both letters capitalized, right? The hundreds of thousands of women's marchers um, in, red, in red towns, small towns, big cities, um, suburbs, um, across race, place, age, ability, um, broadband access, um, and all of the different um, uh, identities and experiences that shape our lives. Um, and so this is gonna be like a little bit of a dizzying body of shared work. So soak it up, revel in it, be awed, be proud of our team justice. Maybe do some doodling or take a lap in your apartment if you're like, whoa, this is a lot of stuff. But I'm just gonna take us through some of it because I have a, a elder black lesbian here in Atlanta, Pat Hussein, um, and she always uses the metaphor and I'm gonna butcher it, so my apologies, but around like, no matter what part of an elephant you're touching, you can never see the whole thing. And I feel that that's also the reality about Women's March or any organization is that we have our part that we're touching, but it's really important for us to be able to see um, the sum of our collective parts, knowing that that's actually our ultimate salvation um, is our collective uh, possibility and transformation. So I wanna bring us back to that. Um, okay, so I'm gonna take us yeah, see, Kathy's already started. Okay, Kathy has already started. Um, yeah, so one, we started at the beginning, the very beginning um, of last year, both celebrating the unseating of Trump and um, working hard in the Senate runoff in Georgia. And women's marchers in Georgia um, knocked thousands of doors in our Knock Your Block program in their communities to turn out voters for the Georgia Senate runoff elections, we also sent texts until the text got too saturated um, and did a bunch of other um, support work there. So I think there's a, I think there's some other uh, 
images. We also worked together to push for COVID relief um, and democracy reform and got historic investments um, through um, the American Rescue Plan, um, as well as the historic infrastructure bill that just finally recently got passed. And so we worked hard in those first hundred days together in a variety of ways, um, through digital Valentines to Congress, telling them to have a heart and get us jobs, care and democracy, to direct actions at district offices as we pushed and helped pass the American Rescue Plan with our recovery recess work with Working Families Party and other organizations across the country. We also caravaned across the South and through um, uh, up to DC, mid-Atlantic, I guess that's what that region is called. I'm sorry, I blanked on that. We caravan across the country in support of voting rights with uh, Black Voters Matter. We also gathered on Zoom to write hundreds of letters to the editor, uh, to our local papers, fighting from e for everything, uh, from COVID relief to the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, as well as supporting the wealth tax um, and the life and death need to massively redistribute resources in this country, as well as op-eds in support of critical race theory. Uh, we also know that a democracy is a governance system that works for the many and not the few. Um, and so we also continue to work um, on matters that matter deeply to us as well in terms of as voting rights and filibuster Fridays, as well as expanding the Supreme Court. Yeah, oh, I like that people are also adding um, more to the chat. So thank you for that. Yeah, and we, were, we are gonna talk about the Sedition Caucus too. I just had it in a different place. Um, so we also chased after bad actors, going after the Seditious Caucus and their funders. We sent 10,000 at least letters to donors of Ted Cruz, asking them to demand a refund and stop their financial support. We called out Marjorie Taylor Greene. I believe that we actually sent 55,000 petitions uh, to get Marjorie Taylor Greene um, uh, removed and essentially um, from her different committees, as well as Lauren Boebert. And then we also went after corporations who fund politicians who supported January 6th and funded anti-abortion politicians in Texas responsible for passing SB 8. In addition to our, these political bad actors, we also continue to put pressure on the Billionaire Boys Club um, and all of the different billionaires um, across the country and the world that continue uh, to hoard resources, uh, pay no taxes while getting massive uh, bailouts um, and continue to dry, be drivers around uh, hoarding and income inequality. So I know a bunch of a bunch of folks dressed up as Robin Sisterhood for Halloween to eat the rich and feed the people, uh, which we also <laughs> thought was great. And then, you know, from 2016, from the 2016 election and the 2020 election to right now during COVID, we continue to learn what an important, influential and frightening terrain the interwebs are. Um, and we continue to further existing important work against disinformation and misinformation with our longest running program, Digital Defenders. Um, and in a side of our Digital Defenders program, we trained up over 1300 digital defenders equipped to fight disinformation in their own social uh, networks and social media circles. We also help flood the pro-life whistleblower website with fake tips to support abortion justice. And we now have a digital defenders resource website with gifts, images, toolkits, and training videos. If you want access, join us next year. All right, I'm about halfway through everybody, but I need to take a breath. Because we did a lot of stuff together, everybody. Okay. And I can't see the chat because I know people are talking. Okay. We also, in 2021, launched a number of new collaborations and campaigns, right? Working to, to meet our feminist mandates of this time, um, which is to further the resistance movements that we were able to build over the last four years, as well as fight around the feminist issues um, that matter the most uh, to us, 
right? Building a feminism for the many, um, as well as building space for dreams, possibilities, and vision versus just the resistance posture. Uh, Cause we know we need both everybody. Um, and so inside of those new collaborations and campaigns, there's two that we wanna lift up. One is our work with the United Vision Project. And that's part of our commitment and our work to end white supremacy um, as a life and death feminist issue. And UVP or United Vision Project volunteers reach out to people who may be sympathetic to extreme uh, white nationalist and white supremacist ideas. And it's a bold approach uh, to bridge the divide by listening, learning, and then directly engaging um, folks through relational organizing. Inside of this the project or campaign that we launched this summer, we've already contacted over 260,000 people in three states and had more than 50,000 conversations. We're expanding our outreach into new states and we're getting ready to move into the next phase of our work, which is having persuasive conversations with folks um, that have essentially are not tied to white nationalism, but are being organized by the right. Um, and so we feel like that's part of our job too, um, as a broad based organization. And then we've also begun inside of our circles program, which are our local volunteer groups, started um, building out campaigns around feminist budgets. So we are exploring and learning about local city and county budgets so we can begin and support organizing to reshape local budgets into budgets that uh, reflect our, our feminist values um, and work again for the many. And this is an ongoing project that we're working on um, that leaders across the country have, have taken and are running with. All right, just a couple more things, everybody. Okay, I'm not gonna get, I'm not gonna read the chat. I have ADHD. Okay, and then the other thing to know, of course, is that just like none of us individually exist alone, no organization actually exists alone. So our uh, coalition and alliance work continues to be something that is deeply important to us. And I know that folks are talking about more marches for Rose and for Roe, um, and don't worry, more is coming soon. Um, but we know and we saw the power um, of our collective mobilizations um, over the fall um, in fighting the, the right wing and extremist um, anti-abortion attacks um, across the country. And so Women's March is a coordinating committee member of Liberate Abortion, which is a national coalition of over 100 organizations fighting to preserve and expand access to abortion in this country. With the coalition, we organize mobilizations nationally on October 2nd, November 2nd, and December 1st to let the Supreme Court know that the country stands together for our right to an abortion. And y'all showed out for abortion justice on October 2nd, as well as those other dates that I just named. Um, collectively, uh, we did what we do, everybody. And we had over 660 marches. And we had over 200 or 250,000 uh, uh, marchers attend these uh, rallies across the country. And 85% of the folks that we work with on those were first time organizers. So a lot, of, a lot of folks came through that had done this before, but a lot of y'all were like, I am moved to act and to organize in this time around this issue um, and I'm gonna go for it. Um, and we think that that is uh, monumental um, in terms of people's willingness uh, to step into the breach um, and step into uh, new roles to meet this moment, knowing what time it is on the clock of the world. Um, so come through, right? And this happened in their country's largest cities to rural towns, to places where people were like, I've never actually seen a march ever in my town, ever. Um, and that is phenomenal. Um, yeah, and so you all showed up in solidarity for abortion justice and rights. And we know that this fight isn't over yet. We're seeing that in the chat. We are with you um, 100%. And we were also able to have our collective work covered in every major news outlet in the country, as well as, you know, local weeklies and all the other things, right? Getting our message out and showing that we, um, that the country is unified 
and united um, against the highly unpopular um, push to, to overthrow Roe. Um, so we were able to shift the narrative and also sort of help re reinvigorate some of the fight. Um, okay, two more things, everybody. And I know that I missed some, so if there's other things that I missed that we did together, you're welcome to put those in the chat. I also see folks lobbying for the other things that y'all want. We hear you, we see you, we respect that as well. Um, but that we also were able to evolve our political education. And we were able to do that one with a smaller program that we did called Feminist Fundamental Short Course. Shout out to anybody that was on that, that we did last spring, I mean, winter. Um, that was for more of our uh, highly engaged activists. And we're gonna do that again next year. And then we also had our Feminist Futures um, web series that just wrapped that actually engaged over a hundred thousand folks. Um, so, which was an a, oh, I'm sorry, I got that number wrong. And this was also in partnership, right? Nothing is done alone, nothing is accomplished alone. Anybody that's saying that is not telling the truth or in denial. Um, our Feminist Futures was also in partnership with a gender justice coalition that we're a part of called We Demand More. Um, and they helped anchor um, and support that program. And that was our eight part virtual series that so far has reached over 150,000 people. So I was wrong when I said 100. So let's give, let's give uh, credit where credit is due. And that was a, um, an experiment around how do we create broad based um, and inviting spaces to engage key uh, feminist concepts, history, legacy, and possibility. Um, and then through it all, everybody, we got ourselves out of bed sometimes in the morning. Uh, for those that are caregivers or caretakers, we got kids or loved ones up um and situated we buried our dead sometimes on zoom right we worked uh to make to make our homes and cities um run some people quit our jobs looked for new jobs we worked to battle our own despair and our own demons or i'll just speak for myself yeah i even got dressed most days yeah and continued to confront not only the external uh, conditions and crises that we're facing, but we're also um, dealing with the ravages of uh, perpetual long-term isolation, right? As we head into year three of COVID and so many decidedly unnatural disasters. Um, and so despite uh, being met by disappointment, cynicism, um, uncertainty, we were also able to build meaning, connection, purpose, and possibility together. Um, come through, Rhonda. I love it. Um, yeah, so if there's other stuff people want to add into the chat, we welcome you to do that. Um, and then I just want to say, like, again, like, none of, like, the staff of Women's March is 11 people. So y'all did that. Y'all did that. Well, what I just laid out, y'all did that. We didn't do that as a tiny staff team. We just get to serve, <laughs> serve the collective. Um, and so we're not a staff of 70, 100,000 people um, as people might believe. Uh, we, are only, we are only a staff of 11. So we think that it's also important inside of our own feminist values to have a gratitude practice. Um, and also want to acknowledge, you know, the number of, yeah, the number of people that supported and made all of this work possible in millions of ways that we're never going to know. But you all know what you did. We're, we don't know, but you all do know. Um, and that we also want to acknowledge that over 195,000 of you all contributed your um, financial resources to Women's March. That's bigger than the town, the city of Mobile, Alabama. That's pretty much twice as big as Asheville, North Carolina, right? And so we continue to be 75%, um, if not 90%, 
uh, supported by you all. Um, and you all vote with your feet and you vote with your, with your resources. Um, and so thank you also for um, contributing to the life, um, the lifeblood of this organization in all the different ways that you do. Um, be that as a donor, be that as a volunteer leader, over 10,000 of you all, um, be that as, you know, inside of other organizations from uh, Planned Parenthood to Working Families Party, um, to Black Feminist Futures, to anybody inside of the We Demand More Coalition, um, to the folks inside of United Vision Project, right? We are also uh, possible because of the constellation of organizations, movement for Black lives um, that make our work um, possible in this time. So want to give folks, oh, and then we also just like want to um, give, give thanks and gratitude for, um, yeah, this planet that despite all attempts um, to continue to, to extract and harm it, um, this planet still um, is providing uh, life for us. Um, in all of the different ways and, and doing its best to keep its promises with us. Um, and so we can't, uh, we would be remiss to not name that. Um, and so I wanna give us one more minute to think about a couple of other questions and then I'm gonna close this out. And then Gina is gonna really close us out. That's where we're going now, okay. Um, and so, there's two questions here. And maybe you write them down and you come back to them later. Is one, um, we're curious, sort of what are one to three things that you give thanks and gratitude for in your personal sphere that come easy to you? You can also add those in the chat. Um, but what are some of the one to three things that you give thanks and gratitude for? Um, in your personal sphere. And then the sort of second question is sort of the next layer below that is what has this time and unveiling shown you or taught you that you are grateful for beyond your personal sphere? And what are some ways to show that gratitude, right? Part of this, part of our feminist value is around knowing that a gratitude practice actually creates more space and room and strength inside of us and resiliency. And the other is, especially in this time of isolation, wanting to think about what are the ways that we can show our gratitude, that we can show our devotion um, so that we are reaching across and out to, to those people, places, or things um, that um, help sustain us in these times. Um, and so I wanna give Gina actually enough time to close us out, but I see folks are bringing some of this in the chat and I want um, to invite people to put this in their journal. I wrote it in mine. Um, I actually also have that on a sticky note in my house of how do we wanna show our devotion better to each other. Um, I want to invite folks to be able to take, take this winter darkness time to think about that a little bit. Um, come on. All right. Mary Beth going in. I love it. And yeah. And see, this is beautiful, Jen. Yeah. Holding both the, the, the small su little support network that we have, as well as holding the realities of feeling very alone. Um, so thank you for these. And I want to just let folks know that like, we're going to wrap in a second. I'm going to hand it over to Gina, but like, we've got a lot of, we're going to have a lot of invitations, hopefully that are grounded in meaning, purpose, and connection and power when we start this next uh, lap around the sun. Um, so we just wanted to separate them out a little bit to give us the space to take stock um, of what we've done together and where we're at. Um, but tune in in January. I mean, tune in next week, there's gonna be announcements, right? So don't worry, we will see you in the new year. 
It is our fifth birthday. We do have a bunch of plans and invitations. Some of them are gonna come to you next week. So enjoy your rest if you're able to um, garner that. And um, we're excited to actually be able to build more power, possibility and purpose um, together um, in 2022. Um, so there's gonna be more announcements coming soon on all of that. And if there's enthusiasm, both for local work or to participate in some of the other programs that we've been naming, there's also gonna be more invitations for folks to be able uh, to participate in that. And if we have any that are already planned, we'll put that in the follow-up email. Um, so do not worry. We're not going anywhere. We have a big collective assignment um, in terms of bringing forth our feminist future. I'm going to hand it over to you, Gina, to really take us home um, and just want to, yeah, say thank you to everybody um, for all that we've uh, been able to do together. So hopefully folks are feeling, um, yeah, validated that even though we don't know what you did, we know that that work makes our work possible, our collective work possible. Um, so I'm going to hand it back to you, Gina to bring us home and then we will uh, say good night. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Kate. And thank you, family, and my tradition, we close what we've opened. And this is a big space, a big old portal that was opened and so much love shared. So please, let us now turn toward sealing this space that is full of love with a commitment to also moving whatever grief needs to be moved, creating more space for love and clarity and profound grace. So, Mother, Father, God, grace, love, we close this space, we seal it shut. Those who walk with you will walk with you and those who walk with me will walk with me. Until such time, and not until we decide to open the space between us again, and when we do, we will be more ourselves. For that is our daily commitment. I release this word into the alchemy of inexhaustible love, and I seal it for all time with the affirmation, ashe, aho, amen. However you affirm the closing of a thing, please join me in that. Say the word, speak the word, release it and close it. And so it is. Blessed be, family. So much love to you. Blessed be. Good night, friends. We'll see you on the other side. Thank you, Gina. Good night.